Hello and welcome back to visualization of decision trees. In this video we are going to take a look at decision tree plot based on the model that we developed and then we also do interpretation of the plot and we end this uh, video with categorical versus quantitative independent variable situations. Once we have made the model for the classification tree, visualization is going to be very simple. We can just say plot and note that our model is called tree. So I'm just going to say tree and then we can run this. The most important variable that helps to classify the three species is always at the top. In fact, this is an inverted or upside down tree because the root node is at the top. This is the most important variable and you also have these nodes at the bottom which are called terminal nodes. So decisions can be made at that point. So that helps us to decide based on the data and model whether we have first, second or third species. So how to read this? If we have data and we find that the petal length is less than or equal to 1.9, straight away we can say that it is most likely to be the first species because it has very high probability, almost 1. But if petal length is more than 1.9, then we need to look at petal width also. And if petal width is more than 1.7, then again we can classify that observation to be belonging to the third species with very high probability. You can see the bar is quite big here compared to other two. But if petal length is more than 1.9 and petal width is less than or equal to 1.7 and petal length is even higher than 4.8 and if we land somewhere here, you can see that the outcome is not as clear cut as in other three situations. Although the probability for the third species is still higher than the second one and we end up classifying that observation as belonging to the third one but you can see the species belonging to second category that probability is also quite high almost more than 40 percent. These situations are more likely to lead to situations where we have higher misclassification. But in this situation, this situation and this situation, you will see that the chances of error are much smaller. You also see p values. So p less than 0 0.001 indicates that this variable is highly significant. So this is a statistical significance. Now if you do not want uh, the output to be in this bar plot format but if you want just the numbers you can plot the same thing using plot tree and then specify that I need type called simple. So you can see now the terminal nodes indicate the probabilities numerically instead of a bar plot we have numerical values. So this one indicates that if petal length is more than 1.9, width less than or equal to 1.7 and petal length is less than or equal to 4.8, then it is likely to be second species, 0.971. So the probability is very close to 1. So this is one of the biggest benefits of decision trees that we can visually see what is happening and interpretation becomes very easy. if we look at first few values here in the training data set. So first one simple length is 5.1. So since uh, that variable has not been found to be significant you can see it doesn't appear here. First we need to look at petal length. So petal length for this observation is 1.4. So 1.4 is less than or equal to 1.9 and immediately we can totally ignore all remaining three quantitative variables because it immediately takes us to this terminal node and says that the chances that this data belongs to first species is the highest and that is going to be a correct classification you can see here. Now let me use tail to look at last few observations. 
so now let's start with the petal length so 5.1 5.1 is more than 1.9 so we come on the right side and then there is a petal width petal width here is 1.9 so 1.9 is more than 1.7 here so that means we come again on the right side and looks like the highest value is for third species and in fact this is a third species so this is also correct classification so this is how this uh, decision tree can be used for interpretation we developed this model where species is a categorical variable or a factor variable what if we have a situation where this dependent variable is continuous or numeric variable so let's say we have sepal dot length instead as dependent variable let's simply run this and again plot this one here so now we get a decision tree plot that is quite big but one difference you see in the terminal nodes is that because our dependent variable is quantitative variable so now we see a box plot what it says is if petal length is more than 4.2 and petal length again is uh, even more than 5.6 then sepal length is likely to be between 7 and 8 we can also add some more things especially when we have many variables we can make use of something called controls to help make decision tree more manageable instead of having too big a tree we can have a tree which is more compact with the help of controls so we'll make use of c tree underscore control you can specify minimum criteria for example instead of let's say 90% or 95% let's say we want very high confidence 99.99% confidence level and we can also specify min split so let's say this is 6 if you are not sure what these functions or features are you can always put a question mark and say c tree underscore control and you can get definition for each one of them so let's run this so now you can see that the tree is slightly smaller compared to what we had earlier similarly instead of 6 if i say 20 so we don't see any further drop in the size of the tree compared to what we had earlier because there is a limit to which we can trim in the next video we are going to take a look at prediction and misclassification errors